Hello, everybody. This is Marsha Schindler, uh, a biologist at heart. Marsha finds that her work circles back to the themes that she is most passionate about. She believes that we are inseparable from the natural world and its stories. From this rich source of narratives, she creates figurative ceramic sculptures, both real and imaginary. Well, this sounds great. Welcome, Marsha. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this looks fantastic. I like how we can see a lot of various um, iterations of your work behind there. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like your cousins Chano and Anne Marie are saying hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us about your current body of work. What you working on? Well, um, actually, I have an exhibit right now up at the Epperson Gallery in Crockett, which is in the Bay Area. And um, I really recognize during this time that it's, it's very difficult to go out to see an exhibit. Um, and so I've been working with uh, Kent Lachin and he has produced a video of the exhibit with me. And that's now on my website at marciaschindler.com. So you can actually experience the, the exhibit. It's, a, it's an installation. So rather than single pieces, it's called Into the Woods and it's an installation of huge tree figures. So I've created a, a small community of trees with an understory of foxes and snake and an overstory of birds and um, it's, it's really my interpretation of uh, the environment and what's happening. So I'm just really uh, very passionate about environmental issues and climate change and what's happening um, in our world presently. And so that work is inspired from there. And, um, and it'll be up until November 1st. So I encourage people to to look at the video if they can't make it out there. Um, I have a question about that. I was trying to look it up on my laptop, but it's slow. Um, is it are the when you talk about there's an understory and an overstory? Um, are the birds attached to the trees, or are they suspended within sort of the installation? I the birds. I have a bird suspended. I have um, an entire part of the installation on the ground um, and the trees that you can walk around in three dimensions. And then I've got a wall that, <clears throat> pardon me, has a kinetic installation of moving butterflies and leaves and a figure. And um, that is also part of the story. So. I think I think it's it's hard to kind of explain the entire thing, but um, the the last part of it happened during the pandemic, when I had a chance to just really think more and have less distraction, and be working in the studio, and it it's really somewhat hopeful because it goes into the whole metamorphosis of the caterpillar turning into the butterfly and um, the cocoon being kind of that place of grief where we are at a pause and something is dying and something is being born. So one form is leaving and another form is becoming possible. And I loved the idea of the possibility of what can happen when something else changes. For example, the way we use our resources, the way we, you know, deal with bigger issues like, you know, carbon emissions or the way we treat our environment. So our thinking has kind of gotten us into this place and what happens when that changes, what becomes possible. So I know it's a little heady sounding, but um, it was really part of where my, my spirit, my heart was. So it manifested in this piece. Um, I, I guess it's heady, but for me, it really speaks to my heart right now with everything that's happening with 
um, obviously our environment and locally, but also, you know, everywhere. <laughs> the world is on it's, fire, right? It's true. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's now, absolutely now. And, and I think part of having a science background in biology, because I was a marine biologist for a while, and I, you know, love biology still. And so what is happening and all the science related to it and, and all the connectivity that we all share when we do something, you know, something else um, reacts to that, that shows up in my work. And so when I have a chance to really let it percolate, um, it comes through. And I, I feel very fortunate that I can do that, so. Right. Um, would you say that, you, know, you sort of spoke a little bit to the idea that we've had to slow down, which has also given you some more contemplative time, um, but has anything else within your practice changed as a result of COVID-19, either practically or um, yeah. sort of artistically? That's that's a great question, and I've, I've been thinking about that. And, you know, as an artist, especially in a very tactile medium like clay or actually any, any medium, as artists, um, we do our work. And for me, and I think many others, it's an isolated activity. When I'm working and I'm present with the project or the sculpture, um, I can't do it with a lot of uh, distraction. So I'm very focused and I'm very private with the work um, until I'm ready to share it. That's one aspect of being an artist because now with COVID, if you want to share your work, right? If you want to be able to have it seen um, and even purchased uh, to sustain you, COVID has created the situation where now I also need to spend time um, on social media. I need to actually, part of my practice is maintaining a website, um, putting information out there. For example, creating this video was very important for me to be able to share the work. And I don't necessarily even see that aspect going away. I think it continues to transform and change, but it is now absolutely part of my artist studio practice. So, you know, I engage in multiple parts of it. It's just not the making of the piece. It's, it's so many other moving parts now. And, um, you know, learning how to do Facebook Live, <laughs> right? And learning how to um, connect to other artists and now doing that virtually. And I've been watching some of these artists talks. There's pros and cons. The plus side is I absolutely get to see other artists, their work, their influences, uh, their spaces and connect to them. Um, and I do spend more time on a computer, which, uh, is not my preferred place to be, you know, usually after time on the computer, I'm really ready to open up a bag of clay and just feel it and smell it and work with it. And, and, um, it calms me down. So it's a balance. It's really a balance of now incorporating that ability, but I can say hi to my cousins and, and have this opportunity as well you know, to, to dialogue with many people at one time. But, um, but it has shifted. I do, I do miss going to see art live. I miss talking to artists live. And um, fortunately, where I, my studio is, it's a collection of artists and it's a collaborative. So I do get that input. I do get to work off of their ideas and inspiration as well. And I, I think that um, for me, that's very important. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm definitely an extrovert and I really do miss, um, like for me, the arts community is sort of like my social life, especially being on the arts commission and trying to keep track of everything that's happening for everybody. Um, so it's a, it is, it's been an interesting 
uh, transition. We have access to people we never had access to before. Yes. You know, and that's really cool because um, anybody can get on a Zoom anywhere. But on the other hand, like I have to, I, I've gotten a really good relationship with the people who run my laundromat. <laughs> so I, I understand that. Um, and I appreciate that. I uh, just wanted to uh, let people know that there is a, the Verge uh, Open Studios exhibition, which has pieces from each of the participants, includes a piece from Marsha. So if you want to go see it in person, uh, you just have to go and be socially distanced and wear a mask, but you can go to Verge this weekend and check it out as well. Yes, and I believe that piece is called Awaiting, and that I did during this time period of the pandemic, and uh, it, it's, um, it's really a felt piece for me. It's a figurative work, and she has, you know, kind of these stripes and bars down her face, and then the insides open, and there are small figures inside, so it's this internal space uh, while we wait. So, yeah, take a look holding all the people that we are and want to become. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. I love it. Um, is there anything coming up that you're, you want to tell people about aside from the installation in Crockett? Um, well, we we're doing open studios and that exhibit will be up until November and, um, I have a piece at the art auction for the pence, uh, but that's kind of what I've got right now. I'm looking forward to starting a new body of work and, and staying kind of quiet right now in this space. So you're, you're waiting for what that body of work is going to be. It's not something that you're fully, it's not fully formed yet. Is that no. what you're saying? Yeah, I just installed the work at the Epperson. So um, that was a big push to get all the pieces there. I'll probably, a lot of times in between big projects, because I like to work in a series, um, it allows me to just really develop the ideas and allow for mistakes and also pay attention to where that series almost takes me. Um, so in between series, I like to just take breaks and work on um, smaller fun projects. I'll probably make a bunch of little foxes. I, I made foxes for the installation and um, I really enjoyed that. And so I'll probably be making some small foxes or I might throw on the wheel just to take a break and um, start glazing and playing with glazing techniques. And usually something comes up. I love, um, folklore and I love the archetypes that come out of that um, for example La Llorona which mm -hmm. is the crying woman or La Huesera the bone collecting women and sometimes I just hear a phrase or something or think about uh, those you know folk tales and then that gets me going and I'll oh, start I love that yeah, I'll start doing the research and imagery will start to kind of come up into my head and then I just usually start and see where it goes because I don't always know where it'll take me and being available to that. And that's um, a lot of times where I'll get uh, inspired. Great. Yeah, I just read, reread for the first time in like 15 years, the women who run with the wolves. I book. love those Yeah. <laughs> so it's perfect timing. It's really Definitely in a liminal yeah. space. <laughs> Great. Those tales are all teaching. They're, um, they're life stories that get passed on uh, that um, tell us a lot about even still today who we are. Absolutely. Totally. I really enjoyed this. Thank you, Marsha. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, are, you doing, are you doing live studio like uh, <laughs> on Facebook? I will be, and I'm going to plug one of the things that we produced here at the studio was a little lookbook that has images and um, tells you a little bit about the four artists that will be here um, live over the weekend that are all participating. 
and we've created these little books as giveaways. They're free little giveaways for you. Um, if you visit my website at marciaschindler.com and go to the contact page and leave me your address and say, I'd like a lookbook. We will send you one uh, in the mail and support our local post office as well because we're going to do <laughs> things for them and we will be happy to send you one as a gift. Thank you, Marcia. Have You're a welcome. great weekend. You too.